Today we're going to be looking at one commandment that is frequently broken, and I would be willing to guess that when this is broken in your presence, you join whoever it is in breaking this commandment. It's much easier to join with, or just to say nothing, to not deal with it, and to break this commandment in that way. What is this commandment? We're looking at the Eighth Commandment today, which says this, You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. And what does this mean? Uh, Luther writes it this, uh, explains it this way for us in the small catechism. We should fear and love God so that we do not deceitfully lie about, betray, backbite, nor slander our neighbor, but defend him, speak well of him, and put the most charitable construction on all that he does. Again, as we start looking at this definition here, it begins with we should fear and love God, recognizing that every individual human being has been created by God in his image, and God loves this person. So whoever it is, the object of this slander, whoever it is, the object of this gossip, God loves that person, and God desires a relationship with that person too, wants them to be forgiven of their sins and wants them to be saved. And as we spread lies about other people, or even if we spread half-truths or truths about things that just frankly don't need to be brought into the open, don't need to be spread around in the public square, uh, we're hurting, uh, we are damaging that person. We are sinning against this commandment here. So we should fear and love God first and foremost as we look at this, recognizing that as we break this commandment, we are bringing God's judgment upon ourselves too. And that's not a, a light thing. But how should we interact with our neighbors then? Well, there's a couple of things that we love doing. The first is we love hearing evil about our neighbors. We would much rather hear 10 bad things about someone else to make ourselves feel a little bit better that we're at least not that person than we were to hear three good things about somebody. Because as we hear other people's character or example being praised and, uh, and lauded over, all of a sudden we realize I am not that good. And it makes us uh, feel upset, get upset. Uh, instead, we should be praising the good that we see in, in people around us and defending people's character and people's honor. Another thing that we like to do is when we hear gossip, we like to spread that as well. Again, it makes us feel a little bit better. Or when we hear gossip or hear uh, slander about someone else, when someone is saying half-truths or maybe truths that aren't, uh, don't need to be said, just for the sake of gaining favor or gaining money or possessions or, or gaining votes or gaining friendship, any of these things, it's unnecessary. And God calls us to not be participating in that. So what do we do when this happens? Well, first of all, we confront those who are gossiping and tell them to, frankly, just stop. That this is not a God-honoring thing and we shouldn't be doing these things. And ask people, how would we feel if we were on the other end of this? if we were the ones being spoken of in this way. So we should confront them. We should also encourage that person who's spreading that gossip to ask them, have you talked with this person about this? Have you asked to see even if this is even true? And if it is a truthful thing that is being spread, that is a damaging to their reputation, have you tried to restore that person? Have you tried to come alongside them and see, is there some sin that you're struggling with that I can help you out with? that I can help keep you accountable with? Or is there some way that I can uh, defend your character and promote your honor even in the midst of this? These are things that we should be doing. And God calls us to do these. I want to close with a, a, a line here from the large catechism. It says this, We should defend our neighbors against the poisonous tongues of those who are busily trying to pry out and pounce on something to criticize in their neighbor, misconstruing and twisting things in the worst way. And at present, this is happening, and we can say it's definitely happening in our world today. But he, as Luther's writing this, he's saying it's happening to the precious Word of God. As people are taking verses out of context to prove whatever opinions that they might have are, are biblical, when in reality, they aren't. They're not reading Scripture as well, how Scripture is uh, defining itself to be read. But it also happens to preachers, too. That we can take words out of uh, preachers' mouths or pastors' mouths out of context, apply it in the wrong way. Again, when that happens, I'd encourage you to, first and foremost, go to the Word of God. See what does the Word of God say. Secondly, go to your pastor as well or whoever it is that is saying something that uh, you take in an offensive way. And ask them about it and talk about it. And be able to say, this is how I received it. 
uh, was this your intent? And find grace and reconciliation in those moments. These are things that God calls us to, and these are things that a lot of conflict could easily be avoided if we simply put these things into practice. Would you pray with me? Father God, we thank you for your word and for its truth. Lord, we thank you uh, that in your word you defend us. Lord, you seek our reputation to be maintained and to be restored. We pray, Father, that you would pr protect us from those who want to slander against us. And Lord, we pray that you would uh, protect us from ourselves too when we want to slander or gossip about others or even share truths that don't need to be shared, Lord. We pray that you would forgive us of these things and help us to realize again, God, that it is because of our own sin that you sent your son to die on the cross for our sins so that we could be forgiven of every thought, every intention, every word, too, that is harmful, that is unnecessary, that is sinful in your sight. Forgive us for these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you and have a great day.